You didn't go in all the way? Sorry. I keep forgetting that this is not a canvas and I and I stretched can it's canvas, but I stretched it on a on wood. I keep forgetting that. So I can touch behind it. Yeah. Do you wanna learn how to stretch it? I will show you how to stretch canvas. No, it's not an only if you need to. It's a this is a necessity all artists need, okay? Alright. Necessity, alright? First, you need stretcher bars, which you can get at any, like, art crafts thing. I get mine from an art store, and they sell them, like, I think this size is maybe 90 cents or 87 cents, depending on where you're at. Don't judge me. These are stretcher bars. Individual ones can be bought, sold, whatever. They're cheap, well, cheaper to buy yourself than get a canvas. All right, so first what you do is that you would put these together, just kind of like shove them in there, dry rough them, not staple them. And uh, also, stretcher bars, the ones with like this little curve is the front, the front. And the flat side is the back. So this is definitely, obviously, this is where you put your staples. This, I'm gonna say it's a tape measure. Just shush, it's fine. So what you do is you take it and you'd stretch it and you try and make sure, like you'd measure this end diagonally and then you'd measure this end diagonally. And it, you want them to be the same number and you'll adjust it minutely uh, like until you have the same number on each diagonal. It's very nice. It's easy, it's simple, and then, well, you do it on this side preferentially, and then you take, what you do is you get your staple gun, and then once you have the, like, it measured and stapled together, you're like, ah, oh, yes, beautiful, I have my frame now, oh my, whatever, what's my next step to do? Then you get the clean canvas, nice and pretty. Now, um... Canvas comes in different thicknesses. This is, I think, the medium thickness, which is 10, I'm pretty sure. There's 0.7, there's 0.10, and there's 0.12. This is 0.10. It's perfect for me doing it, whatever, uh, but it's just kind of like buying fabric. If you bought fabric, you just uh, pay for it by the yard, which is nice. So what you're gonna do, you also need some scissors. You're gonna take your, flip it over to the wrong side, to where right side face down. You're gonna take your canvas and like, just be like, ah, oh, how much do I want off of it? This much, that seems, that seems pretty good. And what you'll want is you'll want this excess fabric, the same on this side. So literally all I do is like, maybe a little bit more. So like right here, I'll cut it there. And then the same right here. So, boop, 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 boop. so like maybe there. Boop, boop. A little bit more. I want it right here. And then the great thing about canvas, guys, is you do not have to use scissors to cut it. There you go. Just like barely start it. You don't have to cut all the way down. And you'll do the same thing on this end. And then once that's done and you can like cut what you like where you need to start how wide it is you can put this up this is this is the best part though all right hold on i'm gonna tilt you up so you can watch it happen and then back it up back it up all right great thing about canvas is you can rip it and it, it'll make a straight line If you only want to go to like where your stopping point is, you can go a little bit past it and it'll be good. Bam! Straight line. 
bam, straight line. But you have a nice clean sheet of thing. <laughs> so this time, what you're gonna do is, remember how we were like, ah, oh, yes, wherever I want it. You'll want to measure it out again, just be like, so I have more fabric on this end than I have uh, on this end that's overlapping. So I'm gonna push my boy down a little bit to try and get the same thickness that's overlapping on both sides. And then all you want to do, the first one, you don't have to stretch too much, is you're going to pull up like this. You want to give it some tension. Then you're just going to go. Bam. The first one doesn't matter as much. The second one, though, you're always going to want to staple across from each other, like right after each other chronologically. And you're going to see me pull this. Right here, this is applying tension to it. And I'm also going to keep that tension when I nail the second one as well. And then I'm going to immediately go to my next one, which is right here. We're making a cross, guys, or an X, depending on how you're doing it. And I'm going to keep this tension all throughout my thing. And if it doesn't go in all the way, that's fine. Because, of course, you'll have a hammer. <laughs> God, this feels so janky. Just like this whole setup. I love it, though. This is great. And then you're going to keep the tension on the other side. Do the same thing. All the way to the corner because you'll have to obviously fold your corners like a nice little proper boy or if you want to cheat you can cut it like the manufacturers do which is fine but if you fold your corners it'll make you feel better <laughs> some people do find corners hard to do and that's why I don't staple all the way to the corner because it'll make it even harder for you you just first you try and make it work that's really it. That's the, how the first corner always goes. You're like, okay, how can I do it? What makes it look clean? How do I want to do it? Do I want to do it this way? However, however you want to do it. But, um, like, that's okay. That's pretty, that's, that's all right. And then you can staple that there. But how my teacher taught me, because I went to school for this, uh, <laughs> stretching canvas only. So what I do is I take one side as far as I can go where I put my staple and then I shove literally everything that I can like in the corner just kind of like tucking it as much as I can until I have like, ugh, you see how that's bulging right here and it's going past this line? It's just because I don't have it tight enough in that corner. So some people use the scissors again that you've already used and take it to the corner all the way to give you a nice crisp line that you can follow and tuck in while you're following it. I like, in my back, I just like to go down with it. And at this point, you need to keep your tension on it immediately. And this is how I'm going to do the rest of the corners. Like, bam, bam. Look how nice that corner looks. From the front, it looks pretty unassuming. And then, you say, how dare you disrespect me? I like to go diagonally too because it deserved it. Oh, you didn't go in all the way. Sorry. It just feels so good. Yes. <laughs> Obey.
<laughs> look how nice that looks. If you do, if you don't like the curling and you have enough, you can always like staple it here. But like, I don't care. Or you could trim it, cut it. But it's fine. It'll be good. It won't fray more than it has, you know, since you ripped it. So this is not the complete thing, but this is how you, to stretch canvas. The next part is, uh, I did it last stream, and I had it off to the side. Gesso. Gesso. Gesso, gesso, it's, we call it gesso, which is fine. And all you do, this is like the primer. I can even show you on here. You see how this is the uh, manufactured one. This is the canvas, same color, but this has primer on it. This is what you paint on. It makes it nice and smooth. And then you just pour a generous amount. Like a pancake. Yeah, like a pancake. Get it nice. Nice and on there, and then you just spread it around. And you'll do multiple layers of these. If you want it the absolute smoothest between layers, you sand it. That's what I was about to say, you sand it, yeah. You sand it. Sure. And then once that dries, you're good for a second coat. But that is how you stretch your own canvas. <laughs> Bada bing, bada boom, bada bam. <laughs>